Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Adik Levit here, the host of the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top entrepreneurs, founders, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And this episode is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group, where we create, document, and improve business processes so companies can scale and thrive. Now, people ask me, what software do I like that I use in order to document processes and procedures? And I'd like to share with you a software that I really like, which is Sweet Process. Now, Sweet Process is an amazing process documentation software that helps create clear step-by-step instructions for every task in your company, anywhere from onboarding new clients to training employees to responding to client requests. With Sweet Process, you have a central place for the team to access procedures and instructions anytime and from any device. So, As a loyal listener to this podcast, or even if you just joined us for the first time, you can try this software for free with a 28-day free-of-charge trial. All you need to do is go to sweetprocess.com forward slash AD, that's A-D-I, like my name, and you can sign up for your free trial and start using it today. And today, my special guest is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Adi. Hello, I'm so happy to have you on my podcast and let me introduce you. So Ashley Michike is the CEO of True North Retirement Advisors, an independent financial advisory firm managing over 300 million in client assets and located just outside of Portland, Oregon. Ashley specializes in designing, building, and implementing custom design exit plans to help her business owner clients secure their final and most important business decision, the exit from their business. She is on a mission to transition 300 small business owners successfully into retirement in the next 10 years. Wow, I love it. This is awesome. So, so happy to have you, Ashley. Thank you. It's good to be with you again, at least virtually. That's right. So Ashley and I did um, a podcast interview, an actual live interview that was pre-pandemic. We're actually sitting in the same room, probably the room she's at, on the couch there. And she interviewed me about systematizing a business and how it relates to exit strategy. And Ashley has an amazing podcast. Do you call it a podcast or is it, how do you call your show? Yeah, it's a podcast. It's kind of like a mini podcast because each episode is only three to four or five minutes long, usually, unless I ramble too much. <laughs> That's yours. And, but then you also interview people and you, like we interviewed, right? So Yes. Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel as well, where I talk about exit strategies, a lot of general retirement planning topics, which is kind of how I, w- how I found my way into working with business owners was working with them on retirement and 401k consulting. So that's, that's my first background is, is on that side of it. And, and I find business owners have a lot of the same concerns that the average American has about their retirement, but it's just, uh, it's just a bit more complicated. Well, a lot more complicated when their business is a major, major part of their retirement strategy. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the content that you put out there for business owners is so valuable. So tell our listeners how they can get to your YouTube channel or how they can get, uh, how they can subscribe to your content, which is free, but so valuable for every business owner. So how can they do that? The name of the uh, YouTube channel is True North Retirement. The name of the podcast is The One Minute Retirement Tip. It's a bit of a misnomer because it's a little bit longer than one minute, but you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'm also on the Alexa platform, which is a little bit unique. Um, if you if you have an Alexa device and you have flash briefings, uh, you can add it to your daily lineup and listen to me every day with your morning coffee if you want to. So it's meant to be just quick little daily nuggets, nothing too long, not a big time investment um, to help you on your path to retirement. And that's that's the purpose of, of both the YouTube channel and the podcast. 
I love it. And I love it that it's on Alexa. Very easy. And definitely I would recommend doing that. That's great information to start the day or maybe the end of the day, maybe lunchtime, whenever. <laughs> great. Okay. So we're going to discuss, we're going to start by discussing or talking about exit strategies, right? Because that is, you're an expert at that. You know, we work with uh, many business owners that are looking at retiring and they want to make sure or selling the business, some kind of a transition and they need the knowledge transfer. So let's talk about exits, how to prepare for exiting the business. And you have a proven process. So walk us through it. What are the different steps of that process of getting your business ready for exiting? Yeah, so one of the key things is just starting at the right place. I think a lot of business owners will become overwhelmed by all the things that they need to do in order to prepare for their own exit. And then they do nothing because it just seems like this insurmountable task. So I, that's a big problem I come across is the procrastination piece of it. And so what I did to to simplify this for, for clients and to help clients make progress and kind of start where they are is, is to come up with a roadmap, like a foundation. If you do these things right and in this order, then you're going to set yourself up for success and we're going to be able to properly prioritize the right things build the exit plan around the right things. And then when we work on implementing the exit plan, which is what I do with all of my clients, I create the exit plan and then we implement it together. Um, I'm sort of like the general contractor in this process and I help them focus and prioritize, okay, we need to do this right now. And then we need to do this and this and this. So, uh, it takes an overwhelming process and kind of boils it down to a, a handful of key things that are pretty universal. If all business owners can just do these things from, from the start, then they're going to be setting the foundation for a successful exit, regardless right. of whether they work with me or somebody else or try to DIY it. Good. So walk us through the process. What are the steps? Sure. So the very first step is valuing your business. Uh, a lot of business owners do not know the value of their business. They rely on a rule of thumb, which can be very inaccurate. Um, but it's essential that you value your business and you have a good estimate of value. Um, and we, we use a software tool to do that. We do it for our clients for free. It's very robust. There's like 50 million businesses in the database. And we provide that estimate of valuation uh, for, to our clients for free, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to get a certified valuation. You may have to down the road, depending on what type of exit you do. But for now, we're just trying to get a really good idea of where the business is at today. Because if we can do that, so if your business is worth X, but you need it to be worth Y, then at least we know where we need to go. And maybe we can't focus on exiting right now. We need to, to do some things to build value, like systematizing the business would be a good thing to build value and increase the value of the business. So sure. we just need to know that it's kind of like gathering all the information. That's that's the critical piece. It's just knowing where are we starting from today. So that that's the first thing. Um, and if your listeners take nothing away from from this episode of your podcast, if you value your business first and do it accurately, and use that as your starting point, you're going to be leagues ahead of uh, most other business owners who really don't have a clue of what their business is worth. And the, and the research uh, studies of this back this up, most business owners, um, they have a really inaccurate uh, view of their uh, valuation because they're using some rule of thumb that for their industry that is maybe a helpful starting point, but it doesn't take into account the nuances of their particular business. You know, I wanted to ask you, so when you, the valuation comes when you show the valuation to the business owners, how do you, are they usually surprised? Or they go, yeah, this is what I thought my business is worth. Or are they, I mean, I know it's probably varies, but what's the majority? Well, I think there's only two kinds of people, half glass full, half glass empty. <laughs> so depending on what kind of person you are, uh, that I think dictates more than anything if they're surprised. I think, 
I think a lot of business owners, um, they tend to be optim more optimistic people. And so I think a lot of business owners think that their business is worth more than it actually is. And that's a big problem. So if you think your business is worth, you know, $10 million, but it's worth $2 million and you need it to be worth $10 million in order to exit, well, then we have a big problem. We have to grow the value of the business. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, we talked about before the show, you know, this is definitely a topic, a very interesting topic, very hot topic, a topic that a lot of business owners would like to know more about. And we we'll probably record another uh, podcast in the future in terms of just talking about the valuation, because I know there are a lot of questions around it, like how much preparation do I need to do? You know, in terms of, we talked about procrastination. So I'm sure there are some inter that don't have their financials maybe in order like it should, they should have it or they have questions. So we'll definitely table that one for our next podcast. But I wanted to continue down this roadmap because it's very interesting and definitely very valuable to know what the steps are. So let's say we've done the valuation. That's step number one. What's step number two? Picking your ideal successor would be next. And you don't have to set this in stone permanently, but we need to have a good idea of the general path. And, and usually business owners, they may be debating a couple different um, strat exit paths. That's very, very common. I rarely have a business owner who is like laser focused. I know I'm going to pursue this path. Um, and so there are some common paths. So selling to employees, whether that be one employee or a a group of employees or a handful of employees selling to a family member or not necessarily selling, but you, it could be gifting, but transferring the business to a family member, doing an outside third party sale. This could take a number of forms, but um, and a lot of business owners is driven by pri two primary factors. One is, uh, you know, what do you need the what do you need financially from the business sometimes if you're going to gift the business to a family member you're not going to get a whole lot from the business in terms of a payday when you exit which is very different maybe than a third party sale where you're selling your business and you're hopefully getting some or all of that business value in terms of a of, of a check when you sell the business so there's a lot of different paths to take uh, a lot of business owners don't know and they haven't thought it through, um, but we want to pick the ideal successor. And sometimes you may have a family member or an employee that you've been grooming and you really want them to take over, but maybe we're just trying to fit a square pig in a round hole and it's, and it's not going to work. So we have to pick the operative word there is ideal. What is ideal for your business, given your goals, your priorities, the skill set and the competencies and, and the drive of whoever that next generation ownership is. Yeah, and it can be also a third party that you might not know, right? I mean, it might be a decision that I don't have anyone internally in my business that can take over. I don't have an employee that I want to sell it to. I will have to um, talk to a broker, right? And sell the business. So that can be. Yes, yes. And figuring that out early on is key because you'll make different decisions if you're going to pursue a third party sale than you would if you were going to do an internal transfer. Absolutely. Good. So step number two. So we have valuation. We have knowing who your successor or choosing your successor or deciding on a successor. So that's step number two. What's step number three? Step number three is figuring out what you need post exit from a financial standpoint. So what are your income needs? What are your assets? What do you have? Is that going to be enough? And there was a study done uh, just a couple in 2019, a couple of years ago that said that uh, the vast majority of business owners, like 80% want to exit in the next 10 years. And most of them would exit today if they could, but they do not have the financial resources yet to be able to do that. So they need to grow the business more. They need to save a little bit more for retirement. They need to maybe delay their retirement because all those things are not lined up yet. So we, we early on, we do some financial modeling and forecasting to see, okay, if you want to exit and say five years or 10 years, are you on the path to be able to do that? Um, are we on that right trajectory or do we need to uh, do some course corrections and, and change some things? And the longer 
the longer time you give yourself to be able to plan for that and know where you stand today uh, is critical because you can do a lot in 10 years. You can do even a lot in five years, but you can't do much in six months. So, you yeah, know, that's the question. To- you know, it's if our listeners are listening to us right now and they want to exit, what's What's the minimum? I mean, what's the minimum amount? So six months, yes, for sure not. But like, let's say they want to retire or they want to exit in two years. Do you think it's enough time or do you, they need more time? Well, you better have some things in place if your timeline is two years. So business would definitely need to be able to run smoothly without you. Like you could be gone for three months and come back and it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good um, test. I mean, that that is a key test is like, can you actually live from the like you're going off the grid on a vacation off the grid? Is the is the business going to continue to survive and operate? That's a key question that I like to ask myself as well from the process side and from the knowledge transfer side. I didn't think about mm-hmm. necessarily from the financial side. When I think about financials, making sure that you have the financials in place. So if you don't have the business anymore. Um, can you survive, right? Because that's really what step number three is all about, not survive, but thrive and, and live for the standard of living that you would like to live. Yes, yes. And most business owners who are successful, they have a really good income. And um, when, you, when you switch over into retirement, there you're you're now left with some fixed income sources so your assets can only provide so much income unless you're going to deplete your investment portfolio you might have rental property you may still be collecting an income stream maybe if you own the 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 um, building where your business is operating out of and you're you're going to keep that building collect rent so you may have all these income streams are those income streams going to be enough to fund your lifestyle um, and so you business owners if they're used to making so let's say well into six figures in terms of their income while they're operating their business. A lot of them are in for a pretty rude awakening when they when they plan out and map out their retirement and maybe their income that can be sustained in retirement is half of that or two thirds of that. So, you know, then there's some decisions. It's all about lifestyle. What kind of life do you want to live in retirement? What does it take to fund that lifestyle to ensure that you don't get to age 85 or 90 and you run out of money and you have to live in on social security and sit in front of the TV for the, for the last years of your life because you, you just ran out of money and you can't afford to do anything else. So we do not want that to happen. No. So that's part of the planning for sure. And then what, and the different options. Okay. So we have step one, two, and three. And what's step number four? Yes. Yeah, so once we get to that point, we know what the business is worth. We we have a sense of the path. We we have a good sense of the financial needs. Then we can establish the exit date because you can't do. You have to do those things in order. Um, the the valuation feeds into the post exit financial needs, and then the valuation and the post exit financial needs feed into the establishment of the exit date. So that's the last step. Is if, how much? How are you involved in the business today? How does that involvement shift and change over time? Do you want to exit completely and have no involvement in the business, or do you want to, you know, work ten hours a week and take uh, two weeks off every month or whatever that is? So, uh, looking closely at that exit date and timeline and how you define that as the business owner would be the last step in that roadmap building of the exit strategy. That's a great roadmap. And what I, I love, you know, this is the system simplified podcast and you just made it so simple, right? I mean, that complex, um, big subject, confusing, you know, whatever, you know, it evokes so many emotions, right? And so many um, uncertainties, but you made it so simple. I mean, if somebody feels confused, I would suggest, okay, let's follow those steps, like one, two, three, four. Let's have them in place. And then when you have all the information, then you can make an informed decision. And you know, actually, one of the things that one of the things that I was thinking about as you were talking is that you want to make it meaningful. You want to make the exit your life after 
the exit meaningful, right? Because a lot of people, business owners, it's kind of like they are, their business is their lives, right? That's how they define their lives. That's define them, them and what they like to do, et cetera. So it's really important to actually have a new game after you retire or exit, right? And I've seen successful business owners sell their business and then launch into a new game or launch into yeah. a new adventure because otherwise it can be, it's part of, it's, it's scary, right? And I'm sure you touch it with the business owners that you talk to about the exiting is what's your next, what's the next chapter like? You know, why do you want to retire, right? Why do you want to exit? Why do you want to sell a successful business? I think all those points have to be touched as well as part of the overall um, strategy. Yes. Yeah. I had a business owner client who retired uh, and sold his, he, he had a business where with two other owners. So him, two other owners, he sold his uh, portion of the ownership in the business to back to the two other owners. So now they own it 50, 50 and he's out and he stayed away for like four months and then he just couldn't he didn't like it. So he, he said, Ashley, I failed at retirement. So now what he's doing is he's, he's back working in the business, but he's an employee and, and he can kind of dictate his own schedule a little bit more. His stress is a lot less. He has the freedom and the flexibility and it's working really well for him, but he was not anticipating going back that quickly. He thought it was on the, it was always on the table as something he might do or thought about, but he was kind of, well, we'll see how it goes. And that's a very common thing that I see, um, especially with, you know, certain personality types there there's, I have clients who they really want to travel. They want to spend time with their grandkids, their priorities completely shift and change you know, maybe from their 40s when they have their head down working in the business, they're they're growing the business, and then kind of in their 50s and 60s, their kids grow up, move out, they start to have grandkids, and now they're thinking like, "Gosh, I've been working now for 30 plus years. I want I want a lot rela- more relaxed pace." And that's a very consistent thread that I see among virtually all my clients is reducing stress, traveling more, enjoying retirement while they're still healthy enough um, and not having to work 40, 50 hours a week into their 70s. So these are all things. But yes, he's like, I failed at retirement and now I'm going back to work. Not financially failed. He's fine. But it's just he was just uh, antsy and, and I would do the exact same thing. You know, there's only so many house projects that I can do. And then once I'm done with those, it's like, what am I going to do now? Well, you are a great golf player. So you probably would play <laughs> golf, right? But you know what? I can only play golf a couple times a week before I, I get bored with it. Now that's, that's not, I know plenty of people who are play golf every day and they love it and they wouldn't have it any other way, but know thyself, know thyself. And if, and if you think that you're going to get antsy, what, what we don't want to have happen, it's very common. You, the initial honeymoon phase wears off in retirement. You get all the projects done around the house and then what? And, and what ha- can happen is you have boredom that sets in and then a, a lot of retirees become depressed. This is a very common situation, um, well documented, very seldom talked about because everybody wants to put on the facade that like life is great, I'm retired, but there's a lot of um, anxiety and depression that can happen after that initial honeymoon phase if you're not careful and if you don't have any structure in your day um, or and and especially for business owners, their identity is wrapped up in their business typically. And so you could, you can often feel like this rudderless ship and not knowing, you know, what your purpose is, how to, how to find meaning in this new phase of life. So it's really critical that business owners are aware that that's a, that that can be a real problem and it's a serious problem. Oh, for Um, sure. And I think, I think part of it is, you know, when a business owner, at least when I talk to them, and they say, you know, I want to, like, the way that I will approach it is because they will come to me and say, you know, I want to exit in five years or three years. And I want the systems documented and I want everything working so I can work in really well systematized so I don't have to work in the business. I find it important to ask, 
why? Why do you want to exit in five years, right? Is it because it's too stressful? Are there like internal problems in the business that we need to fix and then you feel better? Is it because you're working 60 hours a week and you'd like to work 40? Or if you really have, you know, you work that many years and now you have, you're looking forward to the next phase where you're going to spend more time with the grandkids or you're going to travel or, so I think the understanding that why is very important, but it's also- regardless of where you're at, maybe you are super stressed about the business. It doesn't mean you're going to sell tomorrow, but at least go through this roadmap that Ashley walked us through because every business owner should have that in place. They need to know how much the business is worth. They have to have a contingency plan of who the business is going to go to, right? You have to know your finances. You need to know what you can afford and what you cannot afford. And if you cannot afford living the lifestyle that you would like, then what do you need to do today so you can make more more and have more and invest correctly and have a financial plan in place so you can actually afford that lifestyle? And the time to start is today, right? You might say, actually, maybe it was yesterday or <laughs> two weeks ago, but never mind. It's okay. We are right now in, in the present. So the time is today to start that and really see where you are today and for, and forecast the future and then set an exit date. Whether you're going to exit or not, it doesn't matter, but at least it gives you um, an idea of when can you, and then you can work around it. So that was yeah. very, very informative. I mean, that is a great roadmap, very simple. And you told, you gave us your YouTube channel and your, um, podcasts that they can listen again on Alexa. I love that idea. I think everyone after this podcast went to, should go try it on your Alexa. But Ashley, how can they get a hold of you so you can walk, you can help them with this roadmap? Yeah, the, so the best place to get a hold of me is to go to truenorthra.com. And if you go to truenorthra.com forward slash value my business, uh, you'll get free access to the valuation tool to be able to access and value your business. If you collect a few pieces of data, it takes like 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes, and you can have a very accurate estimate of value for your business. So start there, start with the valuation, and you can do that at the uh, True North ra.com forward slash value my business. Also, all my contact information, get a hold of me if, if anyone wants to talk further. I'm always available to schedule a call with anybody who just, maybe you're thinking about this, not sure how, how this type of uh, process applies in your own situation. Uh, I, I love talking with owners and helping them strategize and make a plan and figure out where to go next. Excellent. Thank you for that advice, Ashley. And thank you for being a guest on our podcast. And our listeners, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the System Simplified podcast. We'll see you again next time. And be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.